السلام عليكم اهلا بكم اهل العراق ان شاء الله تبقوا بخير وفي امان في الاوضاع اللي احنا فيها الكورونا فيروس بانديميك انا اسمي الدكتور اشرف رفاعي و يعني يحصل لي شرف النهارده ان انا حد كده فقره بسيطه على العراقي دنتال كلينكس طبعا دعوه من الدكتور مصطفى يوسف والقاسم العبادي وطبعا منظمة من الدكتور أحمد نحراوي عندنا هنا في القاهرة طبعا أحب أكون معكم في العراق بس للظروف الحالية لا تسمح بذلك بس إن شاء الله ربنا يفرق يعني يفرجها على الجميع وإن شاء الله أجيلكم هناك في العراق A little about myself And I'm an associate professor of endodontics. I've been practicing endodontics for about 25 years. Um, I um, and, and I've been working in the College of Dental Surgery, the Azhar I'm a former head of department. Alhamdulillah. And uh, the screen uh, in front of you right now um, has all my contact information, my emails, my blog, and you can scan the QR codes. Uh, to join my personal page or my uh, um, uh, formal page. Okay, the topic for today is um, how to deal with instrument separation. And we need to define the difference between instrument separation and fracture. Fracture, fairly fair. Separation, it just happened. Mabni lil maghul. So, um, when you come to inform your patient about a fracture, you should uh, always say the instrument separated, mesh, it was fractured. Um, and my um, experience as an endodontist, um, I generally get a lot of referrals of instrument fracture. Um, and this is the SS Vivandi. Uh, when I get the instrument fracture. Okay, you can see this is very clearly. There's two instruments fractured. This is an uh, uh, x-ray from my friend and my uh, brother, uh, Dr. Mu'taz al-Khawas. Um, and you can see the instruments, are, you have an entulus spiral fractured in one, in one canal, and you have the tip of an instrument fractured in the coronal portion of another canal. And things like this come to me all the time. I'm always um, hoarded by these type of cases. And then what happens when this nightmare occurs? What do you do? How do you manage? These are all, by the way, these are all my cases. These are not cases from other people. I fracture instruments as well. I'm not saying that everybody else fractures instruments and I don't. And there's no living endodontist that doesn't fracture instruments himself. So, uh, what do you do when this happens? Most people, they start doing this. Then this. And then, after a few years, you get a failure or it comes back from the dead, you get uh, an abscess or uh, a swelling or pain related to your tooth. Now I'm going to start by, by showing um, one case. This is my, this is a 32-year-old 32, 32 patient. Um, she had a lower premolar, you can see it right here. And the lower premolar had complex anatomy. It had um, um, very long roots and very severely curved root here. It, it had three root canals and a very deep bifurcation. You can see it very, very clearly. Very complex anatomy. It was referred from a dentist, uh, her, his, his daughter. So I was very, very, I was trying to be very careful when I was dealing with this case. And obviously you can see here, uh, what do you see here? This is another uh, instrument fracture, not mine. But uh, the dentist previously, previously, he did an instrument fracture on those on that canal, but he filled over it. Okay, so this is a CBCT view. You can see that there are three canals very clearly and very clear exit of the canal. There you have a very big lesion, so you've got a a very clear view on the axial view of its anatomy. 
while you look at the sagittal view you can see the depth of the bifurcation right here and you can see the lesion opening to the distal of the root and yep very clearly there while if we look at the coronal view you can see that the root is very much uh, very close to the mental foramen there you can see one of the roots is actually inside uh, very in proximity to the mental foramen yeah. so uh, I had to be very careful because uh, I didn't want to overextend anything plus uh, surgery was out of the question alright so I did the normal I did length determination I determined where my apical foramen were I started doing my glide path and all of a sudden fracture that was this SC2 instrument from the old Art Revo system and uh, usually when this happens everybody begins to panic so the best solution in this situation is to do the canals you can do and then start dealing with the instrument fracture later so that's what I did I obturated the other two canals and I started doing my final canal uh, here I had a bypass attempt I was lucky I bypassed and this is the situation um, in immediately post-operative you can see here that this m you think this is uh, actually a root the exit of the canals are to the distal and you'll see that in the post-operative x-ray with the healing because all of the legion is on the distal surface of the root and not at the tip and you can see this is immediately post-operative you can see the lesion here and here after two years the apical area is no longer inflated it has no there's a continuous lamina dura but you can see there's a slight widening of the periodontal membrane space to at the exits of the canals but definitely an improvement from the pre and the post-operative very clearly you can see here um, a very large re lesion and here nearly normal this uh, restorative work uh, was done away from my clinic I don't know what happened here I think somebody perforated while creating a post space but this patient came to me two, like, two years later okay <clears throat> so what are the possibilities if this happens you have trilet removal bypass Apical surgery, geraha, shield there with the gift, and uh, to obturate over it, or tear them alayha, or tehshi alayha. So el, el, the question is here: Why not to obturate over it? Um, and this is this is very important because a lot of dentists believe that this is an option. We've been teach a lot of been have been taught this at uh, their primary dental education during their primary dental education. And this is this has to be changed a little bit because we have to understand that the problem is bacteriological in nature. We we measure mic bacteria in the microns, one micron, two microns. And if we look at the canal diameters and sizes and spaces, for instance, a, a size number eight file is equal to 800 microns, while a size number 40 file is equal to uh, 4,000 microns. So you can imagine the amount of bacteria that can be in this 800 microns not to mention that the canal tapers there's irregularities in the canals there's di um, dentinal tubules there's there are um, isthmuses fins irregular spaces which cannot be touched with our instruments and this has been proven time and time again just like the OV Peter study so argument number one that we were taught at university was instruments separate at the apex so um, they are as if they were obturation. The argument number two is the instruments separate after canal preparation, so I'm sure that there are, I've cleaned the canal, so it doesn't make a difference. These are the two arguments. So, for instance, this is an instrument which I fractured, um, and you can see this instrument is fractured within the canal, and what do you see over here? Space. These instruments are not solid and they're not compactable. So, these flutes have the possibility of harboring bacteria, this flute space. As again, you can see from this slide that the instruments themselves are irregular in shape and they contain spaces around them. The canals themselves are not rounded. The canals themselves can contain irregularities. You can see over here, there is irregularity. 
even though the canal, uh, the round area represents a file, but there is still space around these cross sections. And we've seen from studies like the Verna study and um, that this is a micro CT study of mam the maxillary first molar teeth, the mesiobuccal root, and you can see that the extent of complexity of these canal systems, even if you could get into one of these canals, two of these canals, physically it's nearly impossible to m manually um, negotiate a canal system. So we rely heavily on irrigation and hydraulic pressure during obturation to fill these irregular shapes. Um, even again, these are, these are studies from 2018-2016, uh, relatively uh, old studies, but no matter what the studies, these were all antibacterial studies done on, on canals and to see how much how effective uh, cleaning techniques, activation techniques and um, preparation techniques can reduce uh, the, 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 um, the, the amount of bacteria within the canal systems and none of these systems none of these papers reported a complete sterilization of the systems. Yes, a reduction, but complete sterilization is nearly impossible. So there is always going to be an amount of remnant bacteria within the canal systems which we try to keep under control by obturation and prevention of these, uh, this bacteria um, pushing itself into the apical area again. So which one should you choose? Obviously obturating over it isn't an option so you're left with trilateral removal, bypass and apical surgery. The bypassing is definitely the treatment of choice. Whenever I have a chance, um, I know that the emotional decision is that you want to get that out of the x-ray. You don't want to see that anymore. You want that file outside and you don't want it in because you feel um, that it, it will affect your um, image of the of the of of your post operative it's it's uh, some sort of uh, uh, um or insult to you f to leave it in the in the in the canal even if you bypass it so uh, as as a start i would suggest doing uh, a bypass and that is th what is in your patient's best interest so why first of all bypass is less traumatic any removal system uh, any removal technique involves removal of dentin and damaging of the root canal system. Um, it's, it's less expensive. You don't have to buy spe uh, specialty equipment. You use minimal technology, basically you use files. And sometimes if you're lucky, the instrument pops out without any effort and the need for expensive equipment. So how is it done? I know there are a lot of people who have, we have a protocol and there are protocols and basically it's, it's very simple. You use small files, minimal force and a lot of patience. This is what it takes because uh, there is a misunderstanding that when you are bypassing, you are actually creating, uh, you are actually forcing a new canal to be created. Um, the steps of bypass are very simple. You try to find space between the instrument and the canal walls, and once you've found some space, you begin to inch forward, hopefully finding your way within the flutes or within any space between the instrument and the dentin until you bypass the instrument. Once you've done that, you enlarge the canal to larger sizes and create. A, new, a bypass canal or a bypass canal next to the instrument. This is what it takes. It takes a lot of patience and effort. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So here you can see, uh, uh, this is an instrument I fractured. Uh, I fractured it beyond uh, the curve so it wasn't visible on, in, in my mic in microscope. Uh, I started doing the sequence of bypass. I came from the in internal surface. I always come from the inside of the curve because the instrument has a tendency to open up. If it opens up against a metal object, no problem. But if it opens up against uh, dentin, you can start ledging and perforating. And this is the final where I bypassed and obturated to the apex. So the order of things here would be bypass first, uh, if you have the option for bypass, then if bypass doesn't work, then you try at removal if it's possible, and then finally, when all things fail, apical surgery is what we need to do. So the question is here: When do we choose instrument removal? Obviously, when bypass doesn't work, that's the first 
criteria. The second one would be when um, um, you have the proper technology. You need all this equipment. And you definitely need a microscope and you need ultrasonic instruments and you may need specialty uh, removal equipment. So if you don't have this technology, there's no way for you to remove the instrument. When you have the operator experience, um, when I first started removing instruments, I started removing simple instruments, uh, coronally fractured, fractured in the middle area, and then when it became, I became a little more experienced, I started moving towards the apical. So you need a, a little bit of experience with regards to more consistently removing these instruments. When the instrument is ahead of the curve, let me be maksur. في المنطقة اللي انت شايفها جوه كنان وطبعا ده يشترط ان يبقى فيه مايكروسكوب او at least loops to a certain extent so in a case like this on the left you can see I can see the instrument so it would be easy to remove and this is the case I showed before when I look into the canal I cannot see the instrument I can only see dentin so if you can't see the instrument and approach the instrument directly it's going to be very hard nearly impossible for you to remove it uh, when there is sufficient remaining dentine thickness, um, sometimes roots are thin. And like I said, when you are um, trying to remove an instrument from a canal, you need to create space around the instrument. And sometimes if the root is very thin, it can be a, a, a possibility for um, um, perforation. So it's very important that you have to consider the amount of, of dentin um, circumferentially around the, the instrument uh, which has been separated and you have to look very clear, closely, especially in molars, to the danger zone because it's very very common for you during the, the process to perforate. There you go. You can see the difference in um, the diameter of the roots from coronal to middle to apical. Alright, so what influences the success of my uh, ability or my ability to either remove or not remove uh, instruments. Number one, the position of separation. Uh, the more coronal the instrument, the easier it is to remove. The further you move apically, the more difficult it is to remove. Although there has been some research, although it's some research which has shown that the success over time over apically fractured instruments is a little higher if the instruments haven't been removed. But still, failure rate increases. The size and length of the instrument, um, whether it's large, long, uh, large long instruments, as we've seen, if you've seen some research by Toriochi, um, um, usually need to be removed with um, uh, removal devices. Uh, smaller, um, um, thinner instruments can be removed easily with more with ultrasonics, and um, um, then when compared to uh, uh, larger, uh, longer instruments. Um, the original cross-section of the canals, uh, when you look at the canals themselves, if these cross-sections are uh, oval, irregular, there is space around the instrument which allows for possibility of bypass as well as it becomes easier to remove because the instruments may not as be as bound. The more bound the instrument, the more difficult it is to remove. The less bound the instrument, the easier it is to remove. Also, the cross-section of the instruments, uh, comparing um, instrument design, if you have a, a thick cross-section, there isn't much space around it. Also, these thick cross-sections uh, can bind more to dentin, so they're more um, attached to the dentin, making it much harder for them to be loosened. Uh, while, if you look at the different flute designs, if you have a design of a flute which is tightly wound, the number of flutes in contact with the dentin will increase, and the amount of space around the file will decrease. If you look at the more recent rotary instruments, most of them have very wide flutes uh, because of the wider pitch and helical angles, um, um, and, and sorry, narrower helical angles, and because of that, uh, it's a little easier to bypass, and and sometimes they're not as bound to the apical uh, to the dentin as um, other instruments. And the material of manufacture, uh, in my opinion, stainless steel instruments are easier to remove than nickel titanium because uh, when you apply uh, ultrasonic energy to stainless steel, they, it, they don't absorb them as much as nickel titanium. Nickel titanium absorbs ultrasonic uh, instruments and they begin to fracture into pieces. So uh, for me, stainless steel instruments are, are a little easier, 
also because most of the rotary systems made out of nickel titanium have a, have a larger taper so they're more engaged in dentin compared to uh, ISO standardized stainless steel instruments. Um, also another factor that affects the ability to remove uh, is this instrument bound or unbound? Is this instrument uh, well, it's slightly broken. Um, if instruments frick, if, um, fracture by cyclic fatigue, um, they're usually less bound and they're easier to bypass and remove. If the instruments are fractured due to torsional fatigue, that means that the doctor uh, forces the instrument into the, into the canal with resistance and then it fractures in contact with dentin. Um, these instruments are, be are much more difficult to remove when compared to uh, unbound instruments. So this is, for instance, an instrument, a, a, a case which I had done. This patient was referred after the dentist tried to remove the instrument. Now, if you look very closely here, I'm going to magnify. You can see that the instrument looks like there is space around it. So it should be easy to come out. This is probably an H file. You can see, you can recognize the shape of the, the file from, the, from how big it is. It was a very large file, I think maybe a size 45. And the instrument was fractured, and it was very. It looked really loose. I tried to bypass, and I couldn't bypass at all. The, the previous doctor tried to create space using a tapered stone. You can see even the shape of the tapered stone here. It's very clear. And here, after removal, I could not bypass. So in this case, I removed. But I just wanted to show you that the process of removal will result in serious damage to the root structure, sometimes irre irre irreversible damage to the point where the instrument, the, the tooth is no longer restorable. And if this happens, then it's you're going to sacrifice the tooth to do the instrument removal. Maybe another option would have been better in a case like this. Um, with regards to success and failure, this research also is about maybe it, it, it's, it's old, it's from 1999 to 2014, but generally the, the, there has been well-established well documentation over the success and failure of removal uh, com uh, compared to bypass. Bypass has a higher success rate of the cases you choose to bypass, nearly in the range of 48-54%. Uh, uh, there is a research at 84%, but my clinical experience tells me I don't bypass 84% of my cases while uh, instrument removal or the percentage of success of the cases you choose for instrument removal and retrieval then you have a range of about 30 percent so maybe about a three out of every 10 cases you will be able to remove the other ones you will not be so successful so how is it done there are many techniques but generally they're broken down into three different techniques you can have grasping instruments to pull out instruments that are fractured in the coronal area very similar to the gates glide and drill when it fractures um, in the coronal area you use uh, tweezers or a hemostat and just pull it out you can use ultrasonic instruments or you can use microtubes and loop systems which are specifically designed systems for removal of uh, um, separated instruments so this is a, a video uh, with an example of a, 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 a coronal fracture. Um, you can see that I'm trying to create space around the instrument. And you it takes time, you need to create space. And obviously you can imagine if I was doing the same procedure in the middle or the apical third, there would, there would be possibility that this the, the, the perforation occurs um, around uh, in, in within the root system and there you can see the instrument coming out yeah very clear there you go okay and then there could be there are specific instrument systems you have like I said loop systems which depend on a wire which uh, strangulates the, the instrument segment and attaches to it and you pull it out or it can be in the form of a, of a tube a tube which is just like a, a, a metal syringe with a hollow area which um, attaches onto the top of the instrument and then is engaged with uh, um, some sort of uh, mechanism from inside the loops uh, from inside the uh, the tube system the, an example of the tube system would be one like this um, and then this is an example of the tube system basically uh, has uh, a tube with an attachment the tube places onside the instrument and then there is an, a, a, a 
button you press which pushes a, a metal extender that engages the instrument and it attaches to it and you just pull it out while in the case of a loop system it, it's the form it's, it's like a loop uh, which uh, you engage on the instrument so it holds it and you pull it out this is an example of the loop uh, engaging with uh, an instrument this is the teriyachi system okay and sometimes sometimes things don't come out these are cases which instruments have been pushed out into the apical area or have not been retrievable whether it be in the apical or in the middle or the coronal in this case you need to think about surgery whether it be replantation surgery apical surgery but um, doing it orthograde may not always be feasible or may not always be the solution again I would like to thank uh, Dr. Mustafa and Dr. Al Qasim for uh, their uh, their invitation shukran um, lakum rabbana barik lakum wa kida wa yarfa 'annakum al bala um if anybody needs anything from me uh, with regards to this lecture i will be available you can post onto the comments and i will answer as best as i can um because of the internet problems and uh, and uh, um, during this time i had to pre-record this uh, lecture and it's going to be uploaded and then I will be able to answer your questions in the comments please communicate with me like I said on my Facebook on my um, uh, my mail please at any time I will be there and I can answer any of your questions thank you so much Assalamu alaikum